The evil warmongering Zionist won. No, not that one. The other one. The Democratic Party has lost control of both the White House and the Senate. As of this writing, it is still unclear which party will secure control of the House of Representatives. Turns out campaigning on the promise of continuing a genocide while courting endorsements from war criminals like Dick Cheney is not a great way to get progressives to vote for you. One interesting point is that Donald Trump appears to have taken the battleground state of Michigan, where Kamala Harris was soundly rejected by the large Arab-American population of Dearborn, despite voting overwhelmingly for Biden in 2020. Back in August, Harris famously shushed Muslim anti-genocide protesters at a campaign rally in Michigan by admonishing them with the words, I'm speaking. Well... Who's speaking now? To be clear, this is not a good result. A good result was not possible this election. The warmongering Zionist genocide monster lost, which means the other warmongering Zionist genocide monster won. Donald Trump is still bought and owned by Adelson Cash, which means we can expect him to be just as much of a groveling simp for Israel as he was during his first term. The president-elect has publicly admitted that when he was president, the Zionist plutocrats Sheldon and Miriam Adelson were at the White House probably almost more than anybody asking him to do favors for Israel, like moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and acknowledging Israel's illegitimate claim to the Golan Heights, which he eagerly did. Trump closed out his campaign tour alongside his former CIA director and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo which should be enough to dash the hopes of even the most naive Trump supporters that U.S. foreign policy is headed in a positive direction in January. As CIA director, Pompeo led a plot to assassinate Julian Assange and cheerfully admitted that, quote, we lied, we cheated, we stole, end quote, at the agency. This odious swamp creature has remained in Trump's good graces for the last eight years and is reportedly expected to have a position in Trump's cabinet once again. Speaking at a campaign event in Pittsburgh on Monday, Pompeo boasted that he has been called the most loyal cabinet member to Donald J. Trump and said that when Trump is re-elected, we will take down the ring of fire, we will support our friends in Israel. The Ring of Fire is think tank speak for Iran and the militias in Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and Palestine who oppose Israel. So things are probably going to get uglier and uglier. But they were getting uglier and uglier under Biden, and they would have gotten uglier and uglier under Harris as well. That's just what it looks like when you've got a dying empire fighting to retain planetary control like a cornered animal. You don't get to be the U.S. president unless you are willing and eager to do ugly things. Democrats exaggerate how destructive Trump is relative to their own bloodthirsty psychopath candidates. While we can expect Trump to inflict tyranny and abuse upon Americans, It will be nothing compared to the tyranny and abuse he's going to inflict on people in other countries, and it will be nothing compared to the tyranny and abuse his predecessor has been inflicting on people in other countries. All the histrionic shrieking we see from U.S. liberals about Trump only works within a Western supremacist worldview that does not see the victims of U.S. warmongering as fully human and therefore sees scorched-earth genocidal atrocities as less significant than comparatively minor abuses concerning U.S. domestic policy. Abandon hope that any positive changes will come from this election result. Abandon hope that Trump will do good things. Abandon hope that Democrats will learn any lessons from this loss. Abandon hope that liberals will suddenly remember that genocide is bad and start protesting against the U.S.-backed slaughter in Gaza. Abandon hope in U.S. election results, period. U.S. elections do not yield positive results. They are not designed to benefit ordinary human beings. 
Nothing changes for those of us who are dedicated to fighting against the abuses of the U.S. Empire. It will be the same fight after January 20th as it was on January 19th. We fight on.